This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hey, 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 it's Vicky Quinn here from Moxie Books, bringing you the latest episode of the 1000 Authors Show. This week, I am going to be sitting down with Nick Smith, the financial navigator, who is a financial and wealth advisor and one of my book coaching clients. And he has just come to the end of his book writing journey. He is about to release his first book called Find It, Grow It, Keep It. And I've sat down with him today to talk about why he wrote a book in the first place, why he does what he does, and what he found to be true about writing a book, what he learned from the process, uh, what he enjoyed, what he didn't enjoy so much. And he's also going to tell us a story that absolutely cracked me up. And (laughs) we couldn't work out whether or not it should go into this book or whether it's going to form the beginning of his next book. But you will learn all about Clive the Backwards Cat as well. So sit back and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Quinn and this is my, um, not my husband, this is my client and guest, Nick Smith. Hi, Nick. Hello, Vicky. Delighted to be here. Hope you're well today. Thank you. It's lovely to have you here. Um, and I have invited Nick onto the show today to talk about his new book, which is um, on the cusp of being launched into uh, into the wild. And it's all very exciting. So, um, But first, Nick, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, So um, thanks for that intro, Vicky. So I'm a financial consultant and my why is all about financial sovereignty, which is about having more time, more money and more choice with less financial hassle. Uh, And that's really, as you'll soon discover, what the book's all about. So that's what I try and do, give people more choice in their life. Awesome. Um, And this is a book that people really need because most of us, myself included, are not taught how to deal with money at all. Um, so is, is that one of the reasons that led you to write the book? Yes, absolutely, Vicky. I think it's a, a failing, really, of our educational system, not just in you know, primary and tertiary and secondary education, but throughout everywhere you go, really, there's very little um, additional education about the reality of money, of money management and financial management. And, and I thought it was important to try and get some of that down in a, in a context for business owners in particular that gives them an understanding of how it fits, the importance of financial management, and that actually achieving some of these financial sovereignty uh, aims and aspirations is perfectly doable um, with the right mindset, with the right attitude, and with the right expertise behind you. So you've mentioned mindset and attitude, though, and I know that you, you talk about that a lot in your book. And it's it's really important, isn't it? Because so many of us have so many hang-ups about money. It's like we, we see it as this thing that has like immense power over us and ultimately it's just a it's a spanner right absolutely i'm just a plumber with a toolkit and i've got a bunch of products in in the bag and some of them come out at a certain time and some of them don't and i I think the danger with the role that i'm in is we're often perceived uh unfairly i think as trying to ram a pension down your throat Uh, and that's not what it's about Uh, your money and our mindsets and our stories of our life decide a lot of what happens in our future um, and if your parents have given you an upbringing, for example, where um, the, the perception of having money is they're the rich tops or you don't deserve it or well, you're only good enough to earn 30, 40,000 in our world, then, then you've already decided that that's where you're going to go. And until you can get, your, get past those mindset barriers and blocks that we've got inside ourselves from our history and our upbringing, we're not going to move forward. And, and, and take our finance, take charge of our financial future and get to where we want to go. So it's really important. Um, and it's more than just the money mindset. There's, there's so much more to you. Your business mindset is about how you approach what you do um, and why you do that sort of thing. And ultimately, that will be rewarded through the money and the mindset that sits with that to get you to where you want to be. Speaking of where you want people to be, um, tell us a little bit about why you wrote this book. What do you want people to get out of it? And ultimately, what do you want people to be able to do? That's a great question, Vicky. And I, I think it cuts to the heart of A, why I do what I do, and, and B, the, the purpose of the book. So 
Yeah, you know, listen, as a business owner, we're, we're bombarded with myriad different things to do on a daily basis. We've got systems to automate and things that break and emails coming in and text messages and WhatsApp and letters and phone calls and mobile. It's all going off around us. And I think one of the challenges we all face is that information overload. They're not just in the realm of financial advice and looking after your money and your future financial prospects, but how you actually run your business what sits at the core of your business and how you take charge of that environment to make sure that you're, you're, you have the sovereignty you want, that you have the time you need. So the book's really all about trying to cut to the core of those sort of three essential ingredients of giving you sovereignty, which is about more time. And that's not just about having the money to have more time. That's about taking charge of how you run your business, about more money. And that's things like your pricing mindset, how do you choose to price and value what you do? And about more choice, what, what sort of things do you choose to do? And can you afford to do them? You combine all of those things together and you get to a point where you've then started to deliver on the sort of goals and objectives you want in life. So the book for me, was all about trying to cram all that stuff in and give people an opportunity just to understand some of the levers they can pull and figure out, well, how am I going to get to these places and how am I going to do it? And, you know, I can't answer all of the questions clearly in one book, but I hope it gives people some pointers and some areas where they can think, actually, I can do that. That's something I can absolutely do today. That's something I'm not totally confident in and perhaps I need some expert advice in that area. Yeah, that's really cool. And one of the things that I really enjoyed um, about, you know, working with you on your book was the message all the way through that it's not necessarily all about having like, a bazillion pounds in the bank. And I, I loved your message about, okay, thinking about what it is that makes your life rich and successful. And it's not the same for everybody. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and what your idea of a rich life is? Yeah, absolutely. So wealth and richness and money and all these things can have very negative connotations. And you know, the press and our, our history and our personal experiences will define a lot of that, which I alluded to earlier. I think for every person, your view of what that financial sovereignty looks like is very different. Um, but in general terms, that's about having health, wealth and happiness. Now, health, I, I can't really help you too much with that. Um, happiness, well, I think to an extent, yes, that can be helped through, through what I've written. Because we talk a lot about mindset in the book. We talk about your approach to things and why you make the decisions you do. And in particular, how you can avoid the thought of other people's opinions having an effect upon your own thoughts and actions. So how do you then define what that, what that is? Well, I have clients who are pop stars, I have clients who are plumbers and everything in between. And that's, that's genuine, that's, that's not um, made up, that's, that's reality. What they all share in common isn't the amount of money in their bank, it's their shared commitment to achieving their own personal version of financial sovereignty, whatever that looks like. And for one person, that can be £100,000 a year. For another, that can be £20,000 a year. They're not right or wrong. They're different and that they're equally valid and equally important to each of those clients. And they get just as much energy and just as much commitment from me, irrespective of where they sit on that pound financial scale. That's really cool. Um, so I'm going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit more about mindset in a minute. But before we do, I just wanted to um, ask you about your background and where you come from, and okay. why you started doing what you do now. Because where you came from is like such is worlds apart, really. And so tell us, tell us a little bit about what you used to do. Okay, it's a great question, Vicky. And I often wonder myself why I've ended up where I am. And I know my parents are certainly find it entirely bizarre at times. So as a, as a little boy in 1982, age nine, uh, I remember the Falklands War and the Sea Harrier jump jets. And that's all I wanted to do as a child was fly. And I wanted to fly fast jets in the Royal Navy. I had no other ambition whatsoever. Uh, and unfortunately, that all came crashing down at uh, RAF Biggin Hill, age 15, when I went to do the pilot aptitude tests and discovered that, in fact, I'm not very well coordinated, or certainly not enough to, to fly a fighter jet. Enough of ballroom dancing, but perhaps not flying a fighter jet. <laughs> um, but I did discover that at that time also that I had quite an aptitude for mathematics, um, orientation, being able to make decisions quickly. 
And I ended up um, in the late, in uh, age 25, having been in the Navy at that point for four or five years, deploying to the Arabian Gulf as a frontline Lynx helicopter navigator um, in support of UN sanctions. And, you know, that's a very different world to where I am today. But there are some common threads. There's a common thread of commitment. Um, joining the military is, is nothing short of a significant commitment. Um, there's also, I think, a common thread of risk. Uh, because even at 25, whilst my attitude to risk was um, very different to where I am now, um, you have to understand and accept the nature of risk and work within its boundaries and tolerate some risk in order to generate some reward. Now, for me, those rewards were staying alive um, or you know, flying very low and very fast and really enjoying it. Yeah. But they do come with risks. And I think it's those two key tenets of my background as in aviation that have really spurred me into the position I am today because I, I have that personal commitment and I've done a lot of different things. I've experienced some really interesting stuff, which a lot of people don't get to do. Um, and I've taken that and I hope turned it into some really tangible experiences and stories in the book, which really help people picture what it's like to do those things and how they can use those lessons in their own business. Um, but you know, that took me to about age 30. That was still 18 years ago. Uh, what happened in between, Nick? Well, I, I went and did a master's. Um, I ended up, ended up as a, an IT project manager. I mean, I, I had I, I, that was just hilarious, really. Um, I used to fly a helicopter using greaseproof paper and a pencil and a rubber. And, um, and then I found myself uh, in the telecoms industry, project managing a very large um, you know, server infrastructure project. And I, I had no idea about any, any of the language. Um, but I could ask questions, I could build a team, and we delivered some great projects. And, and eventually, over the, over the years, I ended up in financial services running some fairly big, substantial bits of work. And, and eventually, I took, took the plunge and said, well, yeah, I love this industry. Um, actually, I've got other skills. Let's go client-facing uh, and build a business that's there to help other people build their businesses rather than sitting in a nice FTSE 100 and pushing paper around a desk, which was fun in a way, but um, it's not quite the same as what I do now. Yeah. And there are some great stories in the book as well. Um, people are going to really enjoy reading them, I think. They've, you've done a really good job of bringing people into your world as a, as a navigator. <clears throat> I, I hope so, Ricky. You know, I've, as I say, I've, I've done some fairly interesting um, things in the Navy. Um, they were good fun. Uh, they didn't, you know, they came with risk, plenty of it, but yeah. they were really enjoyable. And I hope I've been able to you know, turn them into sort of anecdotal parables that add value to, to the book without just being sort of shouty American style, do this, do that, which I, I hope I've avoided. I think you've avoided that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I would have let your book go out. Anyway, no. if it had been shouting in American. Um, so, yeah, you've, you've got all these stories and you've got them in your book. So what led you to want to write a book in the first place? I think I've always had a book in me and I think most people do. Um, but finding what you're going to write about will come in, it, come in its own time. And I, yeah, I think you can try and sit, sit yourself down and force yourself to write. But if you're not ready to write, it won't really flow. Um, and it, some of these things, they just, they just, something happens in your life. I don't know what it was for me. I think maybe lockdown, I had the time, um, less travel. I was at home uh, and, and opportunity to write. And through the, the mentoring I've been receiving um, outside of what I've been doing with you, Vicky, that was also a catalyst to say, actually, you know, you've got some really interesting stuff you can write about here, Nick, and some value you can bring to people and their businesses so why not do it uh and there lo and behold i came away from one mentoring session feeling very uh, motivated uh, and bashed out the first chapter in a couple of hours I and mean, it's complete and utter rubbish i know that now but um it was the basis and it got me started and sometimes that's all you need you just need to start uh, getting started is the hardest thing without doubt it absolutely is. Yeah, I would I would say getting started is the hardest thing and finishing is the second hardest. It's been less difficult for, for you because you went and asked for help to write the book. But when you are writing a book on your own, finishing it, I think, is incredibly difficult as well. Um, yeah. So the actual book writing process then, have you have you enjoyed it? On the whole, 
there have been moments, I won't lie, where <laughs> I've wanted to throw it and everything out the window. Um, there have been some yeah, difficult times where you, your head isn't clear, you can't, you're not quite sure what you're writing or why you're writing it. You can easily lose track of your structure um, and what you're trying to achieve. And sometimes you just have to accept that those days are going to be there and just go and do something else. Yeah. Um, but then on other days, I've been able to sit down and in two or three hours write 5,000 words, whilst the previous day I might have done 200 all day. So yeah. um, it, it has its ups and downs. Yeah. But yes, I have enjoyed it. I've actually found it as a very therapeutic way of getting, of, in a sense, organising my own thoughts um, into a structure, which was always there. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to have it on a piece of paper now, yeah. albeit quite a lot of pieces of paper. Yeah. Just the right amount of piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's everybody. I've never spoken to anybody who's who's been like, oh yeah, I love the whole process, or oh no, I hated the whole process. There's always always ups and downs, and there's always as well times when you're like, honestly, I just want to set fire to it and never see it again, and that's perfectly natural as well. I remember. I think it was must. It was about September or October time when we were coming up to the edit. And I remember sending you an email, having committed to start the edit, uh, and I wound myself up into a a ball of ridiculousness and yeah. um, just I shut the computer down went for a two-hour walk because I couldn't cope uh, it was just it was I was not capable of doing it at that moment um, but you know thankfully I've had a great writing coach um, <laughs> <laughs> able to turn that around but you will there will have e days like that and that's okay it's just yeah. normal. absolutely and have you have you learned anything new about yourself during the writing process do you think well I've learned that I can write um, which was a surprise because I, I, I'm mathematical. That's kind of my my background. You know, English at school was for me was just a lesson I had to go to to get through GCSEs and then never leave, never touch again. Mm -hmm. So, so to find I can structure a sentence and a paragraph in a meaningful way was a pleasant surprise. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who would look at it and and comment on the grammar, the structure, the style in in their own way, and that's entirely up to them. Um, but I think it's a very fair reflection of my personality. It's a yeah. fair reflection of how I speak, how I talk and who I am. Um, so, yeah, I, I've, I've learned a lot about the abilities that I didn't think I had that actually do sit there just under the surface. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I, that's really common as well. I talked to so many people who are like, oh, I, don't, I had no idea I could do this. You know, I, I never thought I would be able to write a book. I'm not a writer or all of that kind of stuff that goes around your, your head. And it's like, yeah, people are far more, everybody is far more capable than they think they are. It's, it's fun. It's funny. Funny to watch, fun to learn. Well, it is. And I think this cuts to the kind of some of the mindset stuff is that we, we label ourselves. Um, you know, if you, if you choose to say to yourself, I'm not a writer, well, lo and behold, you won't be a writer. Um, as you as you think it, so it shall become, uh, and that that's quite a key tenant of, of the message really through the book. If you choose to believe you can't do something, then you probably won't. Yeah. But if you choose to tell yourself that you can do something, then you probably will. Um, and, and I've seen that, so I, I now you know can say I'm a writer, which is a surprise, a nice one, but a yeah. surprise. a writer and an author, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> so, what did you find most challenging about the whole process? I actually found the hardest part was uh, was finding a structure. Um, it, maybe it's just the way I think, um, but I, you know, I, you know, I know there's sort of different methodologies for writing books, and the whole idea of trying to start with um, writing down what your key theme is, and then breaking that down into separate you know, quarters, and then breaking those into chapters, and then trying to decide what the key message is in each chapter and then going to write the chapter just couldn't work for me. I, mean, I was incapable of doing that. For me, it was more about, I'm just going to sit down today and think, what should I write about today? And I just wrote about whatever I wanted to write about. Um, and then once it was all on a page in this sort of jumbled mess, um, was to try and order it into you know, a coherent story that went, went as a thread through the book. And that worked for me. Um, but that, trying to structure it at the start, I found that really, really hard. Um, so for me, it was easiest just to say, I'm not going to do that bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to write and then figure it out from there. And that worked for me. And that's really cool. And I'm, yeah, I'm glad, that you've, I'm glad that you've mentioned that because I think people 
box themselves in it's like you were saying with the labeling it's like oh i have to do it this way it's like no there isn't really any one right or wrong way you are going to need a structure at some point but you don't necessarily have to start with one you can you know the way it works for you as as you found yeah. i'm just going to empty stuff out of my head onto the paper then we can go back and, and put a structure on it later on and, and move stuff around and that's that's fine yeah i, I absolutely agree and I have to say, and I, and I know you didn't want this to be a testimonial, but um, the reality is I couldn't have done it without your support, I don't think, um, because you need that, sec that second voice in your ear on a weekly basis that's just saying, I think you, this would look better this way. Have you considered it in that context? How about changing the order around here? Things you can't see because you go word blind. Um, it's really important to get that support mechanism just because it gives you an opportunity to make the book great as opposed to average, which you know, I, hope, I hope mine will be and is. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you are right. And, you know, whether, whether or not, you know, leaving, leaving me out of it is there is no book that's written alone. There is, there is no book that's ever been written that has been written by solely one person without any outside help. It's just, you know, that I know of because we do, we need help. We need, an, like you say, an extra pair of eyes on it, whether it's from a coach or a mentor or just from a writing group, you know, people write in writing groups, beta readers, we don't do this alone and we're, we shouldn't have to and we shouldn't feel like we have to. And I think a lot of I think, again, that puts a lot of writers off. They think, oh, you know, I've got to do this. I've got to do it all on my own. And no, that's that's crazy talk. <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. setting yourself up for failure right from the start. I, I absolutely agree. And I think really if you if you're one of those people who's got the book in you, but you just you just haven't yet got started, go and join a little writing group. I don't think they're expensive. You know, it's probably an hour, hour a day or hour a week just sitting down. Um, with the same group of people. I know it's on Zoom at the moment, but actually it works. And you can just fire off ideas. You're with a, a like-minded bunch of people who are going through the same experience and the same challenges. And that support mechanism will be invaluable in getting you started. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, groups are super important. And just um, really quickly, because I just thought this, this would be a useful question for you to answer. How much time did you put aside to write your book would you say <laughs> uh, again one of my failings i'm not sure i really planned for it <laughs> um I, I think i sort of knew in my head it would be a six month task um mm -hmm. i kind of hoped it wouldn't because um six months always feels a long way away for me yeah. uh, and i'm a bit of a here and now person I, I like if i want to do something i want it done now not tomorrow or the week after yeah. um it, in the end i think it took me June, July, four months to do the first draft um, four months over the summer where I had the time, which was, which was fortunate, but um, I, I vastly underestimated the amount of not just time commitment to the actual writing, but energy that it consumed, my mental energy and thinking about it in you know, all the other stuff that comes with it, like your ISBNs and your the cover and the forward and the acknowledgements and about the author and then your footnotes and the reason when it, it's a mammoth task, um, but I have to say, incredibly rewarding. Now I have this proof copy book on my desk. Um, yeah, it feels pretty cool. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, again, thank you for that, because I think a lot of people, most of it, I mean, it's a human thing. We underestimate how long it's going to take to do anything anyway. Um, but I think particularly when we're sitting down to write books, it's like we, we don't realise how much, not just time, but like you said, energy that it's going to take. Um, so yeah, and also I wanted to make clear because I, I can't remember. I think you had days where you spent quite a, lot, a big chunk of time, but I know you also had days where um, you got bits and pieces. That you're you're working in a chunk kind of person, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. And so some people work really well like that. Other people can write a book in an hour a day. Lucky them. I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it varied. Um, I got it. I got myself into a routine, and I think routine's really important. Mm -hmm. um, where I'd go for a, because it, again, because it was the summer and it was lovely, I went for an hour's walk every morning. I'd listen to a podcast or a book or something you know, relevant to what I was doing because it would trigger thoughts and ideas and, and it would get me into the, the you get the creative juices flowing, if you like. Uh, and then I'd come back, to the, come back to my office, I'd sit down and I'd write for an hour to an hour and a half. Now, some days, that would turn into 250, maybe 500 words. And that was okay. If I could do 500 a day, five days a week, I was okay. That's kind of my benchmark. That was that would get me to where I needed to be. But then other days I found myself in the flow and I'd still be writing at two o'clock and I've done three, 4,000 words. Um, 
I mean, that was okay. I had, I, I had the diary flexibility to do that. But I, I think the key thing is getting into that routine um, because otherwise it, it, it'll just slip and slip and slip. And then before you know it, two weeks have passed and you've not written anything again. Yeah. I guess it probably helped knowing that I was going to be on the end of a Zoom call every week. So yeah. Where's your words, Nick? <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, have it. I, and yeah, it comes back. We talked about mentoring, coaching side and support, but there's an accountability thing there as well, I think. Um, you know, some people are really good at holding themselves accountable. Um, I am in a lot of ways, but in this particular way, I knew I'd struggle. Um, so having somebody there who would be asking that question, what's your word count today, Nick, on a weekly basis, yeah. it does focus your mind and think, I need to be, oh, all right, okay, I've got to write some more today. I need to get that word count up. Yeah. And actually, you know, you, you do start off, you, you get you end up at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 words, you think, oh, I'm never going to get there. This is such a long way away. Yeah. And then you hit 50,000, you think that's marvellous. And then you publish a book that's at 65,000. You think, well, how did that happen? Yeah. Where did the extra 15,000 come from? Yeah, just, uh, like you said, it ticks up. <laughs> uh, it really does, yeah. Well, this has been a delightful chat, Nick. Thank you for joining me. Um, really looking forward to having your book released. Um, we'll talk about it um, again at some point in the future as well. And you can, you can talk about it with the hindsight of having, you know, had people read it and stuff. But for now, where can people find out more about you? Where can they get a copy, um, a pre-order copy of your book? Okay, so the book's called Find It, Grow It, Keep It. And it's all about discovering the secret source of wealth inside your business and navigating your way to financial sovereignty. And at the moment, you can pre-order that for free on my website, which is somersetwm, so whiskeymike at the end, .co.uk, slash free dash book. We'll just go to the main website page and you'll see it on there. Uh, and in the next few weeks, it will be up on Amazon uh, as an ebook or printed version. You're very welcome to, to purchase it from there. Lovely. Thank you. Um, I will obviously be shouting about it all over the place. The link to Nick's website uh, will be in the show notes. So check that out. Grab yourself a copy of his book. And this, by the way, it's it's like I'm really... I feel really privileged that I've been able to... Obviously, I always, I always feel really privileged to be able to help people write their books. But this one has, has been great because even before it's been published, I've already done stuff like based on what you wrote in the book to improve my financial situation. So because what, like, what did you do? What did you do? I don't know. You haven't said... Oh, just little things like um, getting everything in one place. Like I downloaded an app onto my phone that just pulls all of your bank feeds and stuff and puts it all in one place so I can see everything that I've got. And like, that was really useful. Um, thinking about, um, you know, thinking about investments and things and you've just, just made it less scary. And also you, one of the things you did was, right, when we get, um, when my husband and I get our shit together and we've got our house sorted and, you know, he's not furloughed anymore it's all right we're gonna to have to talk to, we're gonna to have to talk to someone I wonder who we're going to talk to about um you know sorting our future plans out because I don't I don't want to be you know I don't want to get to the age of 70 or whatever and realize that I actually haven't got any money because that's miserable um I want to be comfortable so yeah there's there's a bunch of stuff um but yeah you gave me a different perspective on risk when it comes to um when it comes to you know money and investments and what's important and what isn't and yeah but particularly yeah, a few practical things as well so yeah that was well, great. I, I like it too um, we used to have a cat called Clive when I was a, a kid <laughs> great name uh, for a cat I know, yeah it was very strange isn't it but it used to walk backwards across the garden towards the birds um, and then it leap round and be surprised when the bird wasn't there and what we realized is this this really stupid cat was of the opinion that because it couldn't see the bird the bird couldn't see him, okay? And it was totally, always completely surprised by this. And I, it's very analogous to me to how, mo how most people treat their retirement planning. Yeah. They just, they're not even looking at it. They're looking at what's going on around them. They're looking in the past at what they've been doing. And they turn around and think, oh, shit, I'm at retirement. Uh, uh, oh, dear, I haven't got anything. Help, what do I do? Um, it's all a bit too late. So, yeah, I suppose the message is open your eyes and see. Um, rather than looking with your eyes shut yeah yeah absolutely and now I'm like why is this the first time I'm hearing about Clive the backwards cat because that could have gone in the book <laughs> it could still go in we could put that in yeah I, no. I, 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 no you're right I only thought of it this morning actually oh you know what though you can that's a story that you can tell elsewhere because this is another just very quick lesson not everything has to go in your book um because I'm a little bit everybody gets a bit um guilty of kitchen sink it's like oh I've got to put everything in this one book that can go in the second edition Nick <laughs> well I mean it's funny you should say that because we have talked haven't we about um 
will there be a series of books? What's coming next? And yeah, I'm certainly not going to commit to anything on a podcast as that requires me to do it. <laughs> but uh, you know, I would like to write a series of, of children's books, both for potentially children and the parents of children of different age groups, because to my mind, the, the biggest gap in our education system is the skills gap that yeah. people leave school with, you know, material knowledge, but no ability to apply any of it or understanding of its context. And I, and I think that to me is a really important thing that I can hopefully add value to in the next books. Absolutely. And Clive the cat would be the perfect character to, to use as well. Uh, that's, that's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, I'm going to that some thought. That's probably, that's probably a good title for a book, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. Nick's, Nick's first children's book is born on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this space. Let it out loud now. You have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was only listening to that bit, I'm sure. <laughs> um, right. So thank you, Nick. This has been delightful. Um, everybody who's listening, go buy Nick's book, Find It, Grow It, Keep It. You can find it on his website, which is somersetwm.com forward slash free dash book. Yeah, dot co dot UK slash free dash book. There you go. And the link will be in the show notes. Um, so, Nick, thank you so much. This has been pleasure. an absolute pleasure. Um, enjoy the rest of your lockdown mark three. Um, <laughs> and I will be back same time next week with um, my usual sidekick, Joe. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you. And thank you for listening, listeners. Thanks so much to Nick Smith for sitting down with me. That was Nick, the financial navigator um, from somersetwm.co.uk. Um, if you want a free copy of his book, remember you can go to somersetwm.co.uk forward slash free hyphen book. Uh, you can also find his book on Amazon. It will be up and available to pre-order very soon. Um, so yeah, thanks, Nick. That was that was great, and it's a really, really important, a really important topic. Um, you know, we we all need to think more about our financial futures and what wealth means to us, and how we want to live our lives, and what a rich life means to us, because it's not the same for everybody. And I also wanted to say a couple of words about what an absolute delight uh, Nick has been as a client. He has he's really worked he's worked his butt off. Um, he's been an absolute dream. He has really been enthusiastic about the whole project from start to finish, and he he's come out of the other side of it with a book that he can be really proud of, and that I'm really proud of as well. Um, it's been it's been really good fun to work with him. The whole process has been fun, and with that in mind, um, because I am. I'm releasing my, I'm releasing my, uh, my client into the wild. I have got a couple of coaching spots opening up uh, in my VIP creative book coaching program. And if you want to find out more about that and make, um, and apply for a spot yourself, you can go to moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash creative hyphen book hyphen coaching. Um, that is moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash creative hyphen book hyphen coaching. Um, you can apply there. You can find out all about how the coaching program works. You can apply. You can find out what other people have said about working with me. Uh, or you can drop me an email, vicky at vickyfraser.com and ask me anything you like and I will answer all of your questions. In the meantime, if you have enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review and a rating at iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast. Five stars, please. Um, or however many stars you think it deserves. Uh, if you know somebody who would enjoy this, send them a link, moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast. Um, and if you've listened to every episode, get in touch with me because I've got something silly to send you as a little reward. And that's all for this week. I will be back same time next week with uh, my lovely husband, Joe Fraser, and we will be talking about uh, why you don't have to have a unique message. You just have to be uniquely valuable. Thanks very much. I will see you soon. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. Mm-hmm.